Welcome back to Houston Life. Before we bring out our first guest, we're putting a QR code on the screen for you. Grab your cell phone and snap a photo. It's how you can sign up to be a KPRC2 Insider and get the clip notes for this next segment. All kinds of great contests and giveaways, even money to win, so sign up for it. Also, if you're hungry, you have come to the right place. Let's meet today's H-Town sit-down guest. He travels Texas looking for family restaurants, unique dining locations, and over-the-top dishes that have locals coming back meal after meal. From all-you-can-eat barbecue to the state's best burgers, David Elder has got an inside look at the local eats you've got to try. He's in Houston this week checking out H-Town's restaurant game. Please welcome the host of Texas Eats, David Elder. David Elder, come on out to Studio B. There he is. Hello, hello. Hey, y'all. How Have are we really you? really never met in person? We've never met in no, person. only over Zoom. I know. <laughs> Lovely to see you like, in person. That was like the scary Zoom time of the world where <laughs> right. like everything was Zoom. And well, I'm so glad to be here in person, though. We are so glad to have you. And this is such a natural fit for you. I mean, I feel like your story kind of evolves with you kind of growing up in the kitchen, right? It does. So my mom, she taught me how to cook when I was little, and I just fell in love with it. And then my first job during in high school was in the kitchen. I was a busboy. So, like, everything has been somehow wrapped around a kitchen, cooking, food, something along those lines. And you turned your passion into a career, which is super cool. You're from New Braunfels originally. So, yes, I went to high school out there. I'm actually from, so I'm from California, and then I went to high school in New Braunfels. And then I like discovered San Antonio later in life. I didn't right. even know it existed or like who was there or what's going on. But I went to college there and then food just kind of followed me. I was a server. I was in back of house, front of house. It was like always something I've done. I think it's so great. And one of those things, it's sort of like in the TV industry. If you produce, if you're behind the camera, in front of the camera, you understand all of those jobs, that symphony that works to get the job done, whether it's in the kitchen or television. I love that you merge these two worlds together. I, I never thought that I would have like the perfect situation that I would want to be in, and this is definitely it. It is insane that I get to go out, try the best food from all over the place, and then put it on TV, and it all just kind of worked. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people are like, how did you get this job? I'm like, I just created it one day. It just kind of worked out, and it was fantastic. Texas Eats, in case uh, some of our viewers have not seen the show, it's a food show, it is a travel show. There are all kinds of great spots y'all see throughout the state. Tell us how this show happened. So this all started out as a segment called Elder Eats on SA Live, which is like the Houston life in San Antonio. And I started out as an MMJ, which is a multimedia journalist out there. And, and at the beginning of, of 2016, middle of 2016, and I was like, okay, how do, I, how do I connect with the audience? How do I connect with San Antonio? So I started doing like organic stories about nonprofit organizations and things. And it was a lot of work to go out there, do the stories. I mean, you guys know, you do it all the time. And I was like, well, what's something that I can do that like possibly has a little bit more about me in there, a little bit something I can share with people. So I went to a new restaurant and sure enough on social media, it did like 90,000 views in one day on social media. Wow. And it was just like, me eating food, I was like, <laughs> this is awesome, I can do this. And it was just me and my phone, I'd walk into restaurants, it was like kind of funny, because I'd be like, hey, I'm here to film for TV. And it would just be me walking in with like an iPhone, and the restaurant would be like, no, but seriously, like where's the crew, where's everybody, I'm like, and it was an iPhone 7 Plus, shout out to Apple for that one. Um, it was incredible, I would like walk in there and I would shoot the whole thing on right. an iPhone. And sure enough, that started taking off. At the end of 2017, like Elder Eats, like I would get called that in the streets, be like, oh, it's Elder Eats. And 2018 was awesome as well. Then the show came out, came about in 2019. I had a 30 minute run of Elder Eats and then they were like, let's give you a one hour show. And so 2020 happened and then 2020 happened. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> so it was like, woo, oh. Yay. <laughs> and but the cool thing about that situation was that everybody was at home. Everybody still needed food. Everybody wanted to know where to go to get your curbside takeout and to go yeah. food. So uh, that's Mark Outing. He's an awesome guy, too. And he was a part of that situation where restaurants had to adapt. Mm -hmm. For sure. And so um, we, we kept going. The producer and I, we kept filming throughout the pandemic. And we became a household name because of that. People were, we were the only, like, other than news thing being produced in our market. So it was really fun to connect with the audience that way. And now, uh, starting at the beginning of 2022, 
you know, the show has just been doing great, and we get to be in Houston now, which I is know. just fantastic. It is so great. Y'all need to follow David because you'll be able to see everything that he does on social media, where he is. And the reason why you're here today is because you're doing all of these Houston spots. So yes. Galveston Bagel Company, Twisted Grilled Cheese, one of my favorites. Another one, Blood Brothers, Noodle Master. The list goes on and on and on. So, But you got to follow him to, to figure out where he's going. But you're not leaving just yet. I'm not leaving. <laughs> yeah. I got a little surprise for you guys. Okay, we cannot <laughs> wait for this. When we come back, David will show us an easy scallop recipe. Did I just blow the surprise? <laughs> this recipe That's is awesome. perfect. Which is the main <laughs> ingredient? Perfect for a weekday meal. Welcome back to Houston Life. We are hanging out with Texas Eats host David Elder. By the way, you can catch Texas Eats Sundays at 10:30 a.m. right here on KPRC2. Dream job. You get to travel the state. Top restaurants, yes. and also, it so happens, uh, you grew up cooking with your mom, you know your way around the kitchen pretty well. Yes, you know, my mom, she showed me a lot of, like, the fundamentals of cooking, which is really important. I've learned a lot from just being in different restaurants, plus, you know, shout out to my wife, she's a fantastic cook as well. And so this is definitely something that she would make at home, which is a really easy scallop dinner. And it's a little bit of jasmine rice, cilantro lime in there, broccolini, and then pan seared scallops, which we have a really hot pan right now. Mm. And then I'm gonna get those things going, but I wanna show you guys this real quick. This is the rice. Oh, look at that. Ready. It's ready to rock Ooh, and roll. Oh, I love that. <laughs> you know how many times I've messed up the rice part of it? Hey, before we get to cooking, we want to start off with the, yes, is this please. our surprise? Yeah, that's one of the surprises, <laughs> yes. Derek, please, this is a La Crema Sauvignon Blanc, which will go really nicely. It's crisp, slightly buttery, a little bit of citrus flavor on there as well, and it's going to pair really nicely with this dish because it's a, it's a light dish. Yeah. You can eat a lot of it, though, so that's kind of the dangerous part. It's oh, so right. perfect for this hot heat, too. Yes. It's a beautiful color on the wine. Okay, so we're going to do this scallops. Yes. What do we have in the pan right now? So right now we have a little remnants because I did cook some earlier. So what is in here right now is a little dollop of butter. Now this is the secret. Okay. Okay. That's this here. I'm going to hold this yes. up. Now this is something you could find at HEB. This is a butter dollop and it has garlic and Parmesan cheese inside of it. Okay. Already that just sounds like ready to go. It's already ready already. And so it's in the seafood section, but don't let it fool you. Put it on the broccolini, put it in your rice, put it on a steak, put it in your bowl of cereal. It doesn't matter. It's cereal. Gonna, it's going to be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm going to get these here jumbo sea scallops. I've already rinsed these off, so that okay. way there's no sand in them. And I'm going to put them right into the pan. And you want to hear a little bit of reaction. There you go. And David, for people who might be afraid of the idea of cooking scallops, it does seem like an advanced dish. Mm -hmm. But you're here to say what? No, it's no. easier than we think. You know what? Um, I think the fun thing about scallops is that it takes like maybe three minutes. Right. You're just looking for that hard crust sear on both sides. Okay. And then we have some of this butter, and then you want to just kind of baste it in that butter. And that's the trick. That's how you're going to get that full flavor. And see how beautiful they finish off like that? For sure. I love that's, the color. That's so you the butter. really want to take the spoon and just start in dripping yes. it on the top. And so right okay. now, we're building the crust on here. But this right now, we're going to put the rice on a plate. Okay. Because, Courtney, you're going to help us out. You're going to be sous chef. Okay. And you're going to kind of finish off the plate here, uh -oh, okay? No pressure. <laughs> it doesn't have to look <laughs> like the other one, but we're going to try to go for it. The rice looks delicious. It Are looks there tomatoes beautiful. in there as well? Is no, that what so I'm actually, seeing? so it's bell pepper. Oh. And then we have it right here. So it's jasmine rice, a little bit of mold and flaky sea salt. If you're not using it, switch to it. It's, it's fantastic. The best. Yes. Chicken broth. And then this is the secret seasoning. I'm not going to give away all my secrets, but that's a kicker too. And then a little bit of olive oil to cook the rice first to make it nice and fluffy. Okay. And then a little bit of cracked pepper in there as well. Lovely. Okay. And so so right here, and then a little bit of cilantro on top. I have okay. it chopped already right. for you. What do you think? That looks that fantastic. Good? And actually, Derek, here's a little lime for you. Go ahead and lime the rice for us. Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. I love that you give me the, the <laughs> most basic, easy job, David. Hey, listen, you, screw top wine, <laughs> yeah. squeezing limes. I can open wine and I can squeeze a lime. You're yes. too pretty. That's for about it. Screw. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to flip these right now because we're going to have a really nice crust on there. See that? I love it. And I mean, like I said, super fast. You want a, the trick to these, a searing, like a really screaming hot pan. That's okay. really what you want. I like that you're using the cast iron. Yes. That is something that a lot of people don't really utilize. I think they're afraid of like the seasoning process, which sounds intimidating. It just means you oil it and get it hot. Really, okay. that's all it means. Can you put another one on there? Yes. All right. I like the rule of three. If you can see like three on there, a little three on the side. Okay. And okay. then Beautiful, I would is. like, Derek and Courtney, I'd like you guys to grab one of each of these squirt bottles. That is a hoisin sauce, which is kind of like an Asian barbecue sauce. Okay. And you're going to give us just a straight line across right there. Look at that. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. really? There we go. Okay, and that's sriracha sauce, which Trouble. is really hard to come by right now. Straight line next Straight to it? Straight line right next to it. Okay. There we go. That's a lot. And then we can put it right there. Okay. 
<laughs> and then, <laughs> but see, they spun. Why I'm yeah. not allowed in the kitchen. <laughs> right. Know. And then a little bit more cilantro, just right on top. Okay. Bam. Fantastic. It looks refreshing. It smells great. I'm going to turn this off, and then I'm going to move it off to the side. Because the big thing about seafood, if you overcook it, it becomes rubbery, mm -hmm. and we don't want to do that. But this is just something I like to do in my free time. It's the show. It's traveling and seeing all the restaurants. That really is something I'm very passionate about. And sharing the stories from all the local small businesses, it's fantastic to be able to do it. And also when the stories do well on social media, and it helps them. It that's does. Huge. And that's, yes. you know, that's the bottom line. We talked about the pandemic and the lockdown and the rest and helping our uh, restaurant owners and friends. Yes. It's so important to keep those open. Okay, this looks amazing. I know, David, you're going to continue to plate that, but uh, we're going to have to leave it there. Yes. Thank you so much. Cheers. Of course, you guys. Cheers. Can't Thank wait to you try so much. it. Can't wait to see this show. Thank you, David. Thank you so much for having yeah. me. Yes. Thank you. Up. And for more delicious food, don't miss Texas Eats Sunday at 10.30 a.m. right here on KPRC2. AJ loves that show. It's good so stuff. Good.